Well, good evening. Good evening, Hidden No More community. How are you today? I am here today with a dear, dear, dear person of, um, in our family, in our lives. Emma Meath is here with us this evening to kick off our monthly interview sessions. Hello, Emma. How are you today? Hi, I'm really good. I'm so happy to be here. Oh I've been so goodness. excited since you've like talked about the whole series and everything. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is such, such, such a pleasure to have you here tonight. I'm so excited to be back with you all, to be back live in the community. Um, and we wrapped up last month with our Women's History Month interview sessions um, with uh, Chef Natasha B and Debbie Tammany. And we also had Destiny Rogers, who was um, coming up on the in the rear um, with our Women in STEM highlight um, and just a powerful woman of God, all three of them. It was such an amazing month. And we kicked things off with Lauren Jenkins, which our interview session turned into something totally different mind-blowing, which we're excited to actually dive into a little bit more about what that looks like too. So we'll be having more information coming on that in the future. Um, but we're excited about tonight to have Emma here and we're going to jump right in because guys, as Emma said, we have been so excited leading up to this day. Um, it's been some weeks as we knew she was um, going to be coming live. You all didn't know, but we knew. Um, <laughs> but we've just been waiting. We've been so expectant. And we know tonight's going to be powerful, really, truly believe that her story is going to really inspire you all and empower you and give you a sense of hope. And so, Emma, we are going to start things off. And I'm just going to ask you, we're going to lead in with the question, who is Emma Meath? Tell us about yourself. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> I feel like, you know, every anytime that that question is asked, like before any sort of interview... <laughs> like meeting somebody I'm like I almost had a loss for words you know I'm like how do I even answer that you know because I feel like I've been on this long journey and of growth and learning and just learning more about who I am mm. and so it's like to put it into words is just <laughs> you know like it's just so bizarre to me because it's like God just wired each one of us so uniquely and so like intentionally and so to discover like who I am as a person is just it's beautiful and it's like it's like God just showing me like how he wove me together um but if I try, were to try to express all of those things uh for who I am um I feel like I am a daughter of God mm -hmm. um but much like, you know, everybody is, you know, like a daughter or a son, but I feel like God has wired me to just love on people and to help them see themselves. And that's really dear to my heart. Um, yeah, just to put it plainly, like that's, that's my heart. Um, I just want to see people grow. I just want to see people heal. Um, and I just want to pe see people be free like we're supposed to be. Like we're, we, have ha we have access to all of this abundance, freedom, you know, our dreams yes. being unlocked, all of the things, you know. Yes. Um, so my heart, who I am from the inside out, is just wanting to, other people to see that in themselves and know that they're worthy and know that they're called and know that they're chosen specifically for the thing that's put on their heart. So beautiful. I guess so that's like a little snippet. Oh, that is more than a little snippet, man. That is so beautiful. And I can truly, you know, testify to that as, as I have the um, opportunity, the privilege uh, to do life with Emma. Um, that's truly who she is and who she shows up as every day. Like, even if she was upset on a particular day or something like that, I've never known it because she truly does um, exude love and light um, wherever she goes. And so, man, that was so beautifully said. And we are, man, we're so um, intricately and, and we're so multi-layered, fearfully and wonderfully made. We've been fashioned 
by the creator himself. And so it is, um, it can be a difficult question, but I think it's so such a beautiful journey unpacking really what that looks like for each and every one of us. And the more beautiful part is that it's unique to each and every one of us as daughters. So that was so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, wow. Hello, Lauren. I see you there. Lauren's on live. Hey. That's so good to have y'all with us tonight. Um, so um, Emma, the next question I would ask you. So who are some of the women who have shaped your life, who have have poured into you or who have inspired you along your journey? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've been blessed with so many. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess like we'll start off with some of like the really recent ones um, that I have just had like the privilege of getting to do life with, which one of them is you, Jennifer. Um, you just inspire me. And oh my gosh, I'm already going to get a Don't do it, Emma. Um, yeah, we have boxes <laughs> of tissues sitting next to us. For I literally have my own box. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh. yeah, you, you just have shared your life with me and, mm -hmm. you know, we're in different stages, right? Like, you know, you're married, you have kids, right? And I'm single, but like, you have like openly brought me into your family and you made me feel like one of your own. And you've never once like, you know, goodness, like you never yeah. once like saw any of my desires or my dreams and just like shot them down. You've never done that. You've only built them up. You've only like called me higher into each and every space of those. And yeah, like I just love doing life with you. You're an amazing person. Like, um, you're just so refreshing to be around. We bounce conversation off of each other. And it's like the most beautiful thing. I just, I love it so much. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, it yeah. is truly, as I said, a gift. And it's an honor to be able to have that seat in your life as well. Um, yeah, I, I can't. I'm not even going to sit here and cry with you all night. <laughs> I'm not, not going to do it. This is about you. I know we would. <laughs> So who else, who else has um, been an inspiration to you who has shaped and molded you um, throughout your journey so far? Yeah. Um, another person that stands out to me is Paige Adams. Uh, my goodness, like she is the most amazing communicator in, in the way that she loves people. She's taught me a lot of what I know of healthy love, yeah. of healthy communication, um, having hard conversations like before I met her like I had no idea <laughs> to confront anything like I was just a hot mess and she just swooped right in and became a part of our community and like God just knew like I need Paige like yes. you need Paige and um, to this day like she's like one of my best friends like always like is so encouraging and empowering and inspiring me and like pushing me to like really pursue everything that like is laid on my heart even if it like really doesn't have a whole lot of like you know outward purpose like but we mm. can't always see the purpose behind it like yeah she's that person that always just like you know what like just go with the flow like see what happens with it you know mm. and like if you know it doesn't work out the way that we thought like who cares like you did it you took that risk you know yeah. And so she is one of those people for me as well. Um, yeah, she's just so amazing. And you do life with her as well. So it's yes. like, so beautiful. Oh my um, God. <laughs> yeah. So good. And, it's so good. Um, yeah, there's like so many other ladies that I could talk about um, that are in our community, in our circle. And they are just like, I, I like to be inspired by a lot of things and a lot of people. So it's really hard for me to, even, you know, like just say a few, but um, yeah, like all these women that we're around is just, I, I, I sometimes I pinch myself and I'm like, am I really like in their life? Like what? Like, this is so cool, you know? Oh my um, goodness. So yeah, 
and then a lot of these ladies like in the community like I just met like Lauren and Debbie um like oh my gosh like destiny like all of these ladies like I'm just like oh I'm so honored right mm. like I just feel like anything I've ever been a part of before in mm. the best way um so awesome. yeah so I'm so happy to like do life with them um but like <laughs> the biggest well okay there's two other ladies that I really wanted to highlight as I was thinking about this um one of them I when I was in high school she like really this was one of my teachers um and coach her name was coach Kalafa um and she literally all she had to do and when we were in athletics like was put on this one song when we were doing our exercises, like if she had like one say of any song to put into this playlist, it was Oceans. Mm. And like, you know, I grew up, I'll probably get into it here and there, but like I grew up Catholic and wasn't really into like, I I basically just went to church to get right with God, right? I was in that mindset as a, at a young age. Um, but she like put that song on and it like resonated with me. like every mm. single time it came on in like this woman is like so nurturing and mm. kind and loving and like she holds you accountable but in the sweetest way like like I just couldn't comprehend like how somebody could love and care about me like that you know mm. like aside from right like my mom right I was just like how is this even possible you know and she like taught me just by her being an example and really like, you know, talking to me here and there, like through mm. our classes and um, starting FCA in our in our school, like she was there for me in so many ways, like when I needed it. Um, awesome. That is so, so cool. Yeah, like she was one of them. And then my mom, who might be watching, I'm not for sure. But uh, she like, I always refer to her like, or even, even when I just think on her, like I think of her as my hero. Mm, that's beautiful like and on, and, oh my gosh <laughs> mm, that's all right take your time honor her yeah it's okay <laughs> she is like so loving and kind and <sighs> she stands her ground like nobody's been <laughs> <laughs> um but she has like I've seen this strength grow in her like mm. from my childhood to being an adult now and like her moving out of the house not long ago like I've just seen this strength in her like manifest mm. and like it's just like built this life in her that's just oh gosh it's rubbing off on me like it's and it's like the best feeling. I used to think like, ah, I don't want to be like my mom, you know, like I knew like she was great, you know, but as a kid, you're like, that's not cool. Right. <laughs> but like it's, that's what I cherish mo most about myself is that mm. I picked up on things that she's laid down, yeah. you know, maybe not knowing if I ever saw and I did. Mm. And I'm just so grateful that you know, we joke around all the time, like, ah, nobody's made like us, like, you know, and it's true, right? <laughs> Obviously, it's true. But like, we just, we're just laughing about it, right? Like, we're just great people, you know. <laughs> um, but my, my goodness, like, she is just so supportive and so accepting yeah. of everything that I've done. Mm -hmm. Even like, when other family members or nobody else, like, understood, like, Mm. she's always accepted me mm. wow yeah she always like didn't care like what other family members were saying and she just she like lifted me up mm. so, so beautiful so beautiful I'll leave it wow. at that because I could go on and on <laughs> My goodness, so so beautiful. You know, they, pe people say the apple doesn't far too far far from the tree, and I know when we met Emma, yeah. I hadn't even met her mom yet. It, it, <laughs> it had been years, but I, when I did, it did not surprise me 
that she was like one of the sweetest women that <laughs> I had ever met before. I was like, oh yeah, this makes perfect sense. Like this is Emma's mom, <laughs> but you really are. She's she's one of the sweetest people. Um, and and so are you. And then you get a lot of that from her. You you are can so continue to say it. That's right. There's nobody yeah. else. Like you we can. All, <laughs> isn't that awesome though that we can all say that? Oh, but there's yeah. another thing to own it right? Because there isn't, there's no one else like you. There's no one else like me. There's no one else like anyone watching this right now. There's no one else like you. There's only one you. And when we get to a place where we own that in all of its goodness, in all of its imperfection, man, that that's something else right there. And so I think that's goes right along with what we're talking about tonight. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you um, for being willing to push through it and um, and share that. So, so Emma, next question: What do you think of, or when was there a time in your life when you think of like being hidden, being hidden? What does that mean to you? Um, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Mm. I mean, it has to go back to my childhood like in so many ways and even like recently too I feel like being hidden is such a it's such a purposeful thing although sometimes it doesn't feel good or it feels yeah. very dark you know um but I'll go back to like my childhood to kind of get a like lead into like what why I'm where I am today um so I grew up in a small town um with my mom, my dad, my brother. Um, I went from elementary school all the way until senior year, the same school, same small town. Um, and being in a small town, a lot of things happen where, you know, people just get in your business or like they just want to, to judge you, right? Um, and... I had a lot of friendships, like, and especially in, like, I want to say, like, elementary school and, and, you know, maybe even a little bit of middle school of, you know, like, being a friend, right, and, like, thinking I'm doing really well, like, I'm loving people so good, you know, and then, like, one day it just snaps, and all of a sudden I'm being talked about by my friend that I thought was, like, you know, really, like, cool, you know, it was cool with me. Um, and that happened like probably like I want to say like five or six times throughout elementary school with different people. Um, and I, like this, the coolest thing that I've uncovered recently, like in my counseling sessions, um, were that I had this like mentality growing up because of all of these experiences that I was I'm not doing something right. Mm. I'm not loving people right. I'm not, you know, I had that mentality because why was all of a sudden like all of these people just, you know, turning on me, you know, I yeah. didn't understand it. But like, I had this whisper and I always thought of it. Oh, like, I'm just being selfish. I thought it was me. Mm. But like, I recently discovered it was the Holy Spirit the entire time. Like he was just saying like, you are chosen, like you are unique and you are beautiful, right? And like, you know, not knowing like the Holy Spirit, any of that, I was like, I am so selfish. <laughs> and so like, but this was all happening in secret, right? And so like, uh -huh. I don't think I ever really told anybody or even like thought anything of it, you know, I, I had those thoughts, but I, you know, I just called it selfish and went about my day. Um, and so I felt like I was hidden, like I was hiding myself you know, from the true call of God, you know, I was second guessing, like, what should, how should I act around people? How should I fit in? Because, you know, being in a small town, there's not many people to talk to, like, there's just, you know, limited amounts of groups to pick from, you know, sure, sure. Um, but that was like one of the probably one of the first times that I really realized that I was being hidden was actually like my friendship isn't very valued here um and then like going into like my own household um to put it plainly like in as sweet as possible 
Um, my dad wasn't the best person to all of us. Um, you know, I eventually found along the way, like going into high school and finally like being awakened, like my eyes were starting to open and seeing and realizing things more. I realized that like, we like, we're all being like mentally abused, like verbally abused, emotionally abused. Mm. And it was like a very dark space. Like I was being hidden from like, like at home, it would be all perfection. Like, or no, at home, like it was like, oh, like we're going to just talk down to each other. And like, that's how it's going to be. And if we get in a fight, we get in a fight, like who cares, you know? And then we would leave the house and it was like, this has to be perfection. Like our mm. has to be hiding all the things that happen behind closed doors. Yeah. Right. Um, and that was really hard. Like I still to this day, I have to like, okay, let me, let me think about, am I just trying to put on this image? You know, am I trying to look flawless? And, you know, the, the coolest part is that we don't have to be, we can be authentic to who we are. Um, and that's beautiful in of itself. Um, yeah. But like, I think we were just being hidden from all of that. Like, Nobody needs to see our scars. Nobody needs to see what's happening. Um, and who knows if people would, like, what What would have people saw if we didn't hide them? You yeah. know, who knows, right? Yeah. But um, another thing I wanted to go back to as well is, like, my mom. So um, it wasn't until, like, my junior year or so, like, I could see the life, like, draining out of my mom. And like, she was like my best friend still is to this day. Um, but I could tell like she wasn't herself anymore. Um, and for whatever reason, never did I in my mind think like I would say this to her. But I, I think again, it was the Holy Spirit like, like talking through me, you know, mm. I told her like, mom, it's time we need to go. Mm. Like We need to go. Like, this is not serving us. We, this is not, we're not living the life that we need and we want and we deserve. And this, and, you know, also going back to, to you know, how I grew up, like my mom's non-denominational, my dad's Catholic, right? And I was really deep into, or at least like for a good portion of my childhood, I really believed like, okay, Catholic. Yeah, I'm Catholic, right? And so a huge part of that, and even just in, in general with being a Christian today too, like depending on who you talk to is, you know, don't get a divorce, don't get a divorce, you know, don't do this. You need to go through counseling. Right. And for the longest time, like I felt really guilty about telling my mom, like we got to go mm. because she actually found the courage to do it. Wow. And <sighs> I think it probably I know that she was already feeling it. Right. But I think me saying it to her, like confirmed, like this is, it's really time to go. My kids see it now, yeah. you know? Um, and so, yeah, like, I think that was the first time that I really saw that it was okay to get out of something if it wasn't serving you anymore. Yeah. And I literally just realized this, like this week, as we're going into this interview, thinking about it, like, wow, like, my mom did the first thing that I needed to see, you know, that I can make decisions that, you know, maybe aren't other people won't be happy with. Right. But yeah. it's what we need. Um, and so I feel like that's when we started to come out of hiding and just expressing like the life that we have inside of us that is begging us to like, let it out, to be in the atmospheres that we that allow us to let it out right mm -hmm. um yeah and so that was just a huge part of my journey and somewhere along the way I started writing in secret um journaling I and I, I still to say don't really know when I started all of that which I would love to like go back into my journals and see uh like when exactly but I journaled for a very long time just like being present with myself and trying to just see what who I am on the inside, out on paper. Um, and it really helped me. It really helped me because nobody was reading these journals, right? 
nobody was seeing me except for me and God. Right. And so it was just so cool because then as I kept writing, as I kept being faithful and whatever was weighing on my heart, on my mind, I was putting it on the page. Right. Sometimes I didn't feel like writing, but guess what? Like along the way, my hand like grew to, you know, not get cramped, you know? And uh, I started to just see myself more like just consistently. Yeah. And it allowed me to heal a lot of things with God, like just in secret, right? Mm-hmm. Like that, and that's just a tool, right? It's not the, the end all be all, just a journal, but it was the tool that helped me kickstart everything else you know, and it helps me like, just see who I am. You know, sometimes we can get so in our head or these we have these unresolved traumas, you know, these mindsets, and we don't know what to do with them. And like putting it on paper helped me like, that doesn't make sense. You know, like, why would I think that way, you know? And so yeah, like, those are just some of the things that I think of when being hidden is just you know, doing things in secret and, you know, yeah, like that's kind of just what I think of. Wow. That was Absolutely. A <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, please don't apologize. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you for your willingness to share all of that. Um, man, I can't help but to see man, our God is just so intentional and he's so amazing that yeah as we introduced you Emma's a writer and she's a creator and she's an author of journals and so just to see right the connection point to how and what he used the tool the avenue your gift your gift of writing to heal you to kickstart your healing journey to allow you to begin to unpack certain things that he wanted to reveal to you new perspectives things he wanted to shift within you that he would use your very gift to kickstart that journey. Yeah. And then to see now how he's allowing you to be hidden no more, coming out of hiding with your writing, something that you did in secret, that he gave you a space to do in secret for you that now he has called you to release and share that with us and share that with the world so that other people can experience that. He's so intentional, so intentional. And just to see and look back to the moments where he had you and your mom, your family hidden, even his intentionality in that, right? He waste nothing I will constantly and continue to remind all of you of that for the rest of my life because I know for it without a fact without a shadow of a doubt and for a fact that he wastes nothing so even to see how he's used those experiences yeah. for you both for your family um, and then even to see the healthy relationships that you have now and what that one choice that one decision, um, courageous moment allowed you to see that it's worth it and that you're deserving of healthy relationships. There's a father who loves us yeah, and that covers us and that hides us even in the midst of the trauma so that as we go forth and he begins to bring us out of hiding and we are willing to come out of hiding that now others get to experience what that looks like and we get to share that with other people. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. So, so beautiful. So share with us in the hiding. You said you were writing in secret. Yeah. Creating in secret. You didn't even know you were creating, but at the time (laughs) you were. Yeah. And so what does that journey look like from you transitioning from hiding and writing in secret to now coming out of hiding and sharing that with others yeah I think uh, the coolest part is that my own secret writing right just journaling understanding just checking in with who I am right how am I 
um, that all manifested into who I am, you know, like, so even if people didn't read the pages, they would be able to see it in my presence with automatically, right? I didn't have to try to do anything. I didn't have to try to put on this image. It just naturally happened because of it. And so, you know, going through all of the teachings that we've done, identity, um, the courses that I'm going through with you guys now, Jennifer, um, it's all just like come into place for me is that mm-hmm. like who I am is important you know and like I think we all like somewhat of a level like know that but like until you really bet on yourself I don't think you like understand like the light that's inside of you that others really need yeah. you know and so yeah like I, I for whatever reason like I so I'm currently just babysitting and you know I'm making these journals now but before making journals which was literally in January of this year um I yeah I was just babysitting I was subbing at the school that I used to work at um but like you know with you know a a job cut you know like you're like I I kind of I need more money right um so let's like back and I want to say like last fall I had I saw I came across this reel that was saying something about like oh like you can publish anything on Amazon or whatever and um so like it was in the back of my head and I I think I played with it a little bit but I didn't feel like it was my time or like anything was going to come of it and then January comes around and I feel this like deep desire and I, I just didn't really like think anything of it I was just having fun you know, I was just creating and I was like, this is so fun. Like, you know, I love journals. I'm going to make journals, you know, and whoever, like, I wasn't going to advertise them. This was never the plan. Um, but I, once I told you guys, I told my mom, I told you, I told Paige and y'all all held me accountable and wanted me to put them out there, which I'm very grateful because I don't know how in the world I would have not done that with knowing the impact now, but I (laughs) started creating these journals. Um, Two of them are blank. um, And those are the journals that I typically write in um, and what I've written in for years now, um, just putting a topic at the top, check-in, personal check-in, you know, whatever my day looked looked like, um, I would just write out all of my thoughts. And so I wanted to incorporate that into my journal. So just blank, two blank journals. And then there's two other journals that were inspired by, one was inspired by you, Jennifer, and then the other was inspired by Paige. Um, And those are more self-love questions, just seeing the value that you are. Mm. Um, Yeah, and so obviously, like, (laughs) all these journals that came about, like, right, seeing who you are, was exactly what I was doing behind the scenes Mm. and I don't think that I really saw that that was what was happening inside of these journals until I started advertising and so I until I started like putting them into you know I use Canva so like putting all of my words into these Canva posts um for later on in the week right like I don't think I realized the weight of everything that was inside of them, which is the coolest part. Cause I think if I would have known, like I would have been like 10 times more nervous about it, but um, yeah, like I, yeah, I wasn't gonna put them anywhere. I was just gonna say, oh yeah, like whoever comes across them on Amazon that, you know, it's meant to be right. But like what I didn't realize was that hiding myself because I was scared wasn't what God wanted for me. Yeah. Right. And so, just as I saw myself on paper, I needed to see myself put things out there, you know, not just for who I am, but like what I can do as well, right? Like what he placed inside of me, you know, and you know, that's not all we are, right? What we can do, but what we can do is a part of spreading our light as well. And so I felt like God was like, no, like that you've done this for a month, right? Like you've made four journals in an entire (laughs) month. You're just gonna let them sit on Amazon like, are you nuts? Like, (laughs) and so, yeah, like, he just really, like, spoke through all of you guys, and Mm. really encouraged me, and I wouldn't have had it any other way, so, 
Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. And we wouldn't have had it any other way, you know, just in, in just, just drawing some more out of this, like as it matters, who is in your circle, who you're running with, who you're allowing to speak into your life, who you are allowing to share your space, who you are allowing in it matters. There's a saying, you know, that the closest five people around you are who you are most alike. They shape your thoughts, your values, your actions, your speech, so much of that. And it truly does matter. And so I told, I was like, Emma, first of all, you know, good and well, if you shared that with us, there was no way that we were going to allow you to sit on this and not share it and not share it you know it wasn't about um you know calling Emma out or anything like that oh no not at all know and see the value in you not just like what you said we need to put that out there not in what you can do yeah but in you and who you are and who he's created you to be And so what flows out of that, no matter what you're creating, if you're doing it for him, with him, it's going to be valuable. And he never wants us to keep it to ourselves, not forever. Sometimes maybe in the beginning and sometimes he'll even speak the word, share something with us. And it's just for us. When there are things like this, he's calling us to create, right? You have to think about the parable of the talents and, you know, what are you going to do with what he's placed in your hands, right? And so it matters who you're like, you you make sure you're getting some people. That's why we're doing and having this community as well for us to hold each other accountable to our greatness and to what he's put inside of and who he has created us to be, right? And that aligning and rising to our purpose and our power because it's inside of each and every one of us. Each and every one of us have something that he's placed inside of us that he wants us to release into the earth to share with others. Is it something that somebody else needs? I told Emma that the journal that she created that was inspired the full journal, my journal. I wish I had a copy of it right here next to me. I don't have (laughs) enough five, but I do. All of the links are in the chat, by the way, everyone. Every, all the links to all of them as journals and how you can reach her in the chat. But yeah, knowing that, and I said it, you put into words and into journal form what I could not articulate myself. Just by spending time with Emma, just by sharing life and doing life with her, that is a gift. That's a gift in itself. And I think a lot of times what we do is we discount. We do it so easily. I love what you said. You were having fun. That was so good because that's how the father fashioned us as well to when we're doing and we're operating in the gift that he gave us. Yeah. It should be fun, y'all. It should be fun. It should be enjoyable. It should light us up. And this scene that even Emma talking about it, I know she was having fun while she was doing it. The part of putting them out there, not so much. And we're so much alike in that part. I got used to it. And now it's fun. (laughs) I'm still learning though. (laughs) Yes, now it is fun. And it is, he wants it to be fun, y'all. That's how he created us to enjoy it to enjoy it. There's a quote um, that talks about how when we're, we're operating in our purpose, when we're you know, living into it, when we're breathing it, is when we're most fully alive. And I've literally seen like another part of you come alive through you birthing and creating and releasing these journals. It's been so beautiful. And so y'all make sure you click those links in the comments, <laughs> check them out. There's something for everybody. And this is only the beginning. That's the fun, exciting, amazing (laughs) part is that you're just getting started. You are just getting started. So I'm so excited about what else is to come. um, What else he's going to use to inspire you for your next creation. And just your willingness to be open to every aspect of your life 
when it comes to creative. I think that's why they're so unique. Like I've never seen y'all. I'm not just saying this because Emma's on the screen with me right now or because I love her so much, but I've never seen journals like the ones that she's created. And that's something that is so unique to you. And that's something inside of you. It's the same way we share it all the time, Jason and I, my husband and I, there's only one thing that you can do. Only you can do the way, do it the way that you can do it. And going back to our uniqueness. And so only you can do what you can do the way that you can do it. And that's what you're doing. We're seeing that in your life, through your creations, through your writing, in your journals. And it is so, so beautiful. Thank you. That so, means a lot. <laughs> goodness. Oh my goodness. Listen, as we come to a close, just share with us a little bit about, let's see, your process of like writing again, you said you would, you wrote in secret and now you, you've authored and you've created these journals and you write, um, you're writing, Emma's writing is so beautiful. You all check out her IG page as well for some of that. But yeah. what do you hope that these, you know, stepping out and coming out of hiding, releasing these things, um, sharing your gifts with us and with the world, what story do you hope that it's telling to others? Yeah, I would just say that, like, you know, I didn't just make these and think, like, oh, like, yeah, I there's a story behind why I love the journals, you know? It's what helped me see me, you know, like, just like we talked about. And so, like, coming from where I did, you know, and people have other situations, right? Like, they may be worse, maybe better, or, like, you know, whatever that looks like. But seeing who you are regardless of where you came from mm -hmm. is always going to be valuable you know it's always going to make you present enough to just sit with who you are the way you're wired and allow that light to flow you know into the world and I think that like just me coming out of hiding I just want people to know that it's possible right mm -hmm. it's possible to see yourself and you know it's not going to happen overnight like it's I mean, I've had to do it for years, you know, and anybody's timeline can look different. And my hope is that it would take less time for you, right? But that's why I wanted to create them as well as I kept going. Um, I want you to have the resources, right? Like I want you to, I, I just want to make it easier for you to dig out what's inside of you and to value what God, why God has you here, value who you are value just the yeah like what I keep saying like the way that you're wired the way your brain operates the way your heart beats like everything about you like I want that to be a value to you right who cares what anybody else thinks that they, it doesn't matter right God already knows if we're listening to God eventually it's gonna seep in right but we have to really like process that you know and we have to really just start to believe it for ourselves, you know, like even away from, you know, God never separates. Right. But like, even oh, aside from just him directly speaking to us, like, you know, what are you going to say to yourself? You know, like, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, my hope is that people just are inspired to like live their lives the way that they need to live their lives, not the way I need to live. Right. Or the way that I have lived or you have lived, but really just asking the questions that draws out the way that they want to live right the alignment we always talk about alignment Jennifer like right. I want people to be aligned with who they are not because it's going to hurt my feelings right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. don't stop what you're doing because it's going to hurt my feelings yeah I had to let that go a long time ago you know and that is the best <laughs> that is the very best thing you could do for yourself is to let go of something to pursue what lights you on fire mm -hmm. that's the life that God wants you to live right yeah. like I, I always used to have these visions and I don't so much anymore but I used to have these visions of me and Jesus just dancing around in a garden mm -hmm. in this field of flowers right like we're just dancing and he's taking me under these trees and like we're having the best time like mm -hmm. God wants that here on earth for yeah. you you know 
and nobody can decide it for you. People can inspire you. People can really like talk you up. Right. But you have to draw that out. Nobody's going to do the work for you. Nobody's going to say like, actually, I think you're called to do this. Like actually, and if they are great, you know, but like executing it the way that you do is what's important, you know? Not because somebody else did it this way or this is, you know, I really like that. Let me recreate it. Right. Mm -hmm. But like doing it out of your own being, you know? And so like, yeah, I think all of these journals and the things I will create are like, are all just pictures of the way that we can, I feel like they're just fragments, right? They're tools Mm -hmm. and they're fragments of our healing journey, of our growth, of the way that God wants us to step into our identity Mm -hmm. And not just identity as in, you know, son or daughter, right? But yes, that's a huge, huge part of it. But like, also, who are you, daughter? Like, who do I say that you are, you know, aside from just the general concept, right? Yes. And valuing that and honoring that. And I, I keep, I, this keeps coming up in my head too. Like, honoring me is honoring God. And yes. honoring God is honoring me. Like we're all in union, right? Like we're in union with God. And if we're doing both, like you can't lose, you yes. can't. And so, yeah, my heart is just to make people just have it convenient for them to embark on that journey. Cause I know it's scary and I know it's a lot of work, you know, I being hidden and doing it is a lot of work, but my hope is that like me even creating the content and you being able to like write into it makes you feel like you're not alone in that journey. You have somebody that's been there, you know? Wow. Yeah. (laughs) So amazing, Emma. Wow. It's I, what I keep hearing and this word keeps coming back. You're, you're facilitating your journals are facilitating others healing journey. It's Mm -hmm. facilitating their process of unpacking all of what's inside of them all of it the good the hurt the pain the excitement the gifts all of the stuff that makes us such beautiful daughters of the most high and so thank you thank you again thank you for your willingness to to be hidden no more and I can't say it enough to share your gift it truly is a gift um, that he's given you to share your gift with us to help us along our journey. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. One other thing that you said just before we close, and I, mm-hmm. I want to close with this just to honor, there was a, um, a gentleman who um, Emma got to meet once virtually. Um, I believe his name is um, Marv Conway. Um, a good friend of ours. I know you're yeah. looking. I but, meet so um, many people. Of our family. <laughs> But Marv, our good friend Marv, went on to be with the Lord two weeks ago um, after a battle with, uh, with cancer. And um, during one of uh, our challenges, with uh, which Emma was a part of, um, so you heard his voice, but you didn't get to see his face. Um, Marv said something you were saying about self-talk, like how we see ourselves and how we talk to ourselves. And during one of our challenges, Marv shared this. He said, Self-talk is very important. How would God speak to you if you were in the room? And how would God tolerate you speaking to yourself the way you speak to yourself? And that is something that just hit home. As you said, that is quickened to me. I I can't think of a better way to to end um, this segment, this interview, just sharing that, sharing uh, Mars words and how they align with what you just said, Emma, because he does honoring ourselves. I love what you said. Mm -hmm. Honoring ourselves is honoring God and honoring him is honoring ourselves because we are in one with him. We're in communion with him. And so that's the importance of having the courage, Mm -hmm. being willing to go on this journey. That's That's the important part of it. If we grasp that piece of it, is first of all, you're deserving and worthy of going on the journey to being able to honor yourself that way. And that secondly, the father 
already honors you that way. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter what you will ever do in the future, he always honors and loves and sees you the way that he wants you to see yourself. Yeah. So guys, click the links in the comments. I promise you, you will not regret it. The journals are not only beautiful, but they're so full and they're so rich of so much goodness that Emma has poured her heart into them um, right straight from her soul. So thank you so much again for doing me this honor to be <laughs> able to highlight you and to just share this space with you. Um, I don't take it lightly. I'm so grateful for you and your life um, and just for your presence. So thank you so, so much again. Is there anything closing, any last things? What would you say to those listening? What would be your closing statement? Oh my goodness. You're important. Mm. <laughs> you yeah. are so important. And you're so called mm. and you're so worthy and you're so unique. Each of you guys are. Yeah. Thank you so much, Emma. Thank you all for tuning in with us tonight. And it's been so good to be back with you. Uh, as I said, we'll do this on a monthly basis. Our interview sessions will continue on a monthly basis. Um, so much more to come. Uh, I know I keep saying it, but we're truly exciting, uh, excited about what God is birthing in, in our hearts um, and what he's just leading us um, to do um, in and with this community and with you beautiful ladies. So check out the links in the comments. This interview will also premiere on our YouTube channel um, at some point over the next four weeks before our next interview. So stay tuned for information on that and make sure that you go and subscribe and like and turn on notifications as well on our YouTube channel so that you can stay connected and stay in the know of what we have going out there as well. So thank you again for tuning in. Thank you, Emma. Love you all. We will see you next time back here for our Hidden No More Women interview sessions. Be blessed.